coming today. I really appreciate all the love and support I feel in this community. Thank you to Corey, to Meredith, Louder, <laughs> Building 180, Agopolis, every resident, all my new friends. <laughs> um, this couldn't be done without you. So, my name is Lauren Zabo. I just recently finished my master's from the San Francisco Art Institute in May, and I was really unsure about this transition. And I applied for this residency in kind of a panic of what's next. I'm gonna be kicked out of my studio space, and I never imagined that I would get the opportunity to be here, and life is different now. Um, I can go on and on about how, but I'll try to stick stick to the work. So these paintings I created as my last, um, I guess I consider it actually be one piece, not a series. It's called um, SOS, and it's a triptych that was derived visually from a photograph that I took of a spy typing advertisement. And I've been fragmenting advertisements for some time now and trying to kind of subvert the meaning and um, think about capitalism and consumer culture in a different way than um, the way I was fed growing up in Los Angeles. So for me, this piece not only speaks about, I hope the viewer can ponder what they want to save, save our oceans, um, save me, uh, save our souls, whatever that may be for you. I invite you to ponder those questions. Um, it also makes me think about pollution, um, especially in the sky and uh, the politics of the sky, especially what does that mean when we're now advertising in the sky. So these are the, the thoughts I was having before I came here. And I had some ideas before I came here, but I wanted to challenge myself to do something in response, do something site specific. And I hadn't met anybody in person before I loaded up my car and drove here and knew I was gonna stay the night and I see those doors closed behind me, those gates. <laughs> and you know, you're, you're a little nervous, but I just had to trust and let the process kind of run its course. So response is a, a big, big new vocabulary word in my, my practice. And um, it's definitely been very fruitful just kind of um, not having expectations and just letting your community of so many amazing people kind of guide you and having these late night conversations and, and all of these things. There's, it's a beautiful space and it feels like vacation, but it's also work. It's this interesting balance. Um, you're able to work with ease um, and in and love and with resources. So this, is, this has been great. Oh, they wanna come in. So, fast forward, I, I come here and um, I get the tour of the property and I see this vehicle. It looks very different when I first saw it and it was parked under the tree near where a lot of you guys are parked now and it was very unrestored and had pine needles in it and um, the tents are all tattered up and, you know, spiders infested and all of this. And, and I've always been kind of interested in these kinds of um, decay of our man-made environments, if you could say that. Um, so I wanted to challenge myself by starting to think about it. And then I asked the community, is this something that I can repurpose? And they were really excited about it. And then I got more excited about it. And I, I was like, wow, this is wild. Like I had never even painted a car. Like I'm usually painting oil on canvas. But it was just too interesting to not just put everything in, and especially with everybody's expertise here and all their knowledge. Like, I usually work alone in my studio, and I live in a studio apartment <laughs> in Oakland, and uh, really relying on the community, not relying, but embracing the, the community to help me with this is the only way it could have been possible. So I was thinking about camouflage and repurposing camouflage in my own way. Um, I had some Tremploy ideas as well. Um, just trying to figure out if I wanted to hide this or make it visible. And it, 
it was such a great opportunity, but it's a huge responsibility that should be treated really sensitively. And so I dived into a lot of research around the vehicle, found out that it was very likely from Vietnam War era, based off of its field artillery texts and the crew numbers and the jungle camo. And also, the history of the property has been really informing this work and answering my questions. Um, just to brief you, um, the late owner of this property, and this was his family home, Jacques Littlefield, collected over 220 military vehicles. <laughs> so, <laughs> that, and now it's an artist space, and this warehouse space was, I mean, I think this room might have been like kind of a showroom kind of thing, but not all of these were housed here, but some of them were. And that's why the concrete goes out as is, because it's healthier for the vehicles to pass over that. So I took on all of that and researched this history, and there's a lot of interesting layers um, between General Electric, Monsanto, um, these vehicles being manufactured actually in San Jose. Um, but his wealth came from his father that helped, well not helped, I guess they kind of drove along the, um, the Utah Railroad Company. So it's interesting all of this like power and transportation. Um, there's also a room near the cathedral where Jacques' models are of all these different vehicles and you can see like the paint jobs getting better. This was an obsession since his childhood. And then when he got old enough to be able to spend and had, you know, he bought life-size versions of these vehicles. Um, so that really fascinates me and that history is all still new to me and um, I'm still investigating that. I will also say that this project is still a work in progress. I'm getting really involved in how many different ways I can repurpose this vehicle. So the first step was just repainting it um, I do plan on putting typography on this piece similar to the paintings here. Um, and the words are being sourced from thinking about oxymorons and especially like military vocabulary. Um, the main subject I've been working with here is rainbow herbicides, which is, um, was sprayed from planes. And I was already working with things sprayed from planes, so I was like, okay, I guess I need to do a sky. And I was thinking about color, and the rainbow herbicides have six colors, so I said, okay, I'm only gonna work with these colors. And I kind of just let it take me from there. Um, I'm also turning it into a printing press, and I'll demonstrate that um, after I wrap up this um, last few minutes of the chat. Also thinking about clothing to match the vehicle. Last night, I started writing a play. <laughs> and this is gonna be possibly a stage in the moonlight. And where's Des Tree? Yeah, he was playing flute. And I think that might be the only sound other than the, the vehicle. And so all of these ideas are still, it's very generative. And that's, that's the point of this project for me that I found is just how many ways can we repurpose this and, and give it new life, new meaning, um, and talk about things that are really challenging, um, like the effects that are still harming, and, and I don't even have words for it, I'm still wrapping, wrapping my brain about around how devastating a lot of the um, just man-made violence, basically. <laughs> Um, so, the rainbow herbicides were sprayed, they were tested multiple places, but in regards to Vietnam, this vehicle to clear canopies so that these vehicles could park in them instead of camp. So that's where I am with this project. Um, does anyone have any questions before I go outside and it's, we're going to turn on the vehicle, it's going to get loud. I also, I hope to not trigger anybody. So just check yourselves. Um, this is very sensitive for me, and it's been a journey. Studying, especially 
American war, and it's very relevant today. So I appreciate all of your sharing. We'll move outside, and I'm going to demonstrate the printing. And then after that, um, excuse me, <laughs> we're going to go for a ride. Um, we can't all fit, and I don't want to go more than once unless we feel like it's really necessary because it does really tear up the road, and I don't want to turn it into a toy either. There's a lot of adrenaline that comes from being in that vehicle, and we, we tested it before I painted it, and I felt it for a whole day after that, so I just want to let you guys know before. <laughs> and, um, so it'll be kind of loud, not so great for questions once we move outside. We can chat more after, but if you have anything now you'd like to ask regarding conceptually, yes. Well, maybe not super conceptual. Just, I'm curious what the full message was. Oh. Yeah. Save money, visit guideco.com. <laughs> <laughs> I made multiple paintings just from that one piece. And I don't like to exhibit them all together because then they fill out that message. But this is just save. I also did my largest. This, you guys are welcome to see these cards. They're left over from my anime show. Um, money written in the sky. When that's by it, I mean, there's all these things. And I also did dot com just on its own. I called it the cloud. You know, that sold out right away at the gallery. <laughs> and people were like, can I have it? Can I have it? I'm like, it's gone. They're like, can you make another one? I'm like, yeah. I have screen prints of it. Like, that's not really how it works. But <laughs> yeah, does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. Yes. I was curious how much you felt you could link the two pieces as a single art piece and art in the sky, yes. but also with the intersection of capitalism and marketing with the uh, military version of and how those are linked in many ways? Yes, absolutely. Um, when I started this painting, I was originally thinking I wanted to show the passage of time because it's painting and it's a very ephemeral in reality. Um, reality. <laughs> um, but I was thinking about the color change as um, maybe first it was like different times of day, like a sunset, and then it's night, it's like day, sunset, so night. And then as I was painting it and like thinking about all these questions, I thought, no, something went terribly wrong. Like this is the apocalypse. And someone was crying for help and they didn't get it. And I was meditating on that. And at that point I had no idea I was gonna be doing this project or coming here or anything. And then as researching the Agent Orange and these colors and all of this, it just leaked. Yeah, there's no Agent Gray or Black. There's Agent White, though. There's Orange, there's Blue. White, Orange, Blue, Pink, Violet, and Green. Those are our colors. Yeah, so I guess I should also say for the printing part, too, um, that reminds me, I've been adhering rubber to it, but I'm also thinking about, I'm going to look into what it's going to take to replace the rubber with new rubber and actually carve into it. So you don't have to be loading up paper, like you can just drive on the dirt road and then it'll print like the tracks. And that's another word I've been working with. This is an M548 tracked cargo carrier. And thinking about the word track and tracking and kind of like how you can get so many meanings out of that, both literally and involving military and surveillance. I typically think of tanks as like enclosed vehicles, and I noticed this one's open. Yeah. Is when you took on this tank and this project was it was this it in its entirety, or did you like strip it down at all and kind of like? Look behind you. Shape? That's the back. Oh, okay. Of the um, <laughs> yeah. I I will put up some before pictures if you guys are interested. Um, a lot of. The beginning of the project was just physical labor of climbing up. And there's all those seats outside, those little cushions, those are from the vehicle. We have a whole pile of stuff behind the curtain, too. Yeah, so the decision to take everything off was like, I'm planning on retenting it, but I didn't want to do it quick and dirty, you know, I wanted to 
do it well. But that'll come later. Um, and we can enjoy the view of the property in the meantime when we go on our ride today. Will you spray paint the, like, the carpeting and everything? Like the same color as the I think the painting's just gonna continue around. Yeah. And I have a treat for you of what's inside of it that you'll see. Maybe I gave away too much. <laughs> Yeah, I'm thinking about the, the inside of the cargo. I, the only thing I haven't really touched is the inside of the cabin. It feels too sensitive for me right now, and I think it's good to look at it in tatters. Um, so I'm not messing with that part, and I don't know if I would encourage anyone to ever, but that's to be determined. <laughs> yeah. Um, the, it feels really light, the way that the project looks right now, and I need to weight it down a little bit more, and I'm going to work on that. Yeah. Yes? Is there any significance that, that these are all saved, and that is a tank that could be connected to the... Well, we chose to bring this work here because of its connection. Yeah. Does that answer your question? Yeah. yeah. What, what was the question? Uh, I was wondering if there was any significance that that is a tank that would be going to theoretically save something or stop something and then these are it's kind of just um i wouldn't call it a coincidence but yeah, it's just it? i'm letting kind of my conceptual framework dictate what projects i have and they happen to have like an evolution and they have all these strings that you know attach to each other Okay, so I'm gonna be printing with the side that's closest to us. So um, you'll see it's like concrete and then it starts to be that kind of gravel. We wanna stay clear of that side in the front, but please make yourselves comfortable. And um, yeah, we'll begin a demonstration. Also, this is, this is like a military vehicle. So it's, it's dangerous. It's make dangerous. sure you are yeah. keeping your space And it's from very it. loud. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 